What we have been told by our mainstream media is a lie. Here is the real story of the Lecky massacre from an eyewitness. The events of 20th October 2020 at about 6.50 p.m. was meant to be an obscure future chronicle that Lagosians and indeed the world was supposed to look back on in 30 years and ponder if indeed anything at all actually happened. Misinformation circulated the internet, clouding fact to the point that to date there are some who cast aspersions on anyone who actually reports that anything other than scare tactics by the Nigerian military to move troublemakers out of the way of the Lekki toll crossing happened. Tonight, Watchman News will attempt to cast aspersion on the aspersion casters and put to bed any notion that only one person died that fateful night. In an exclusive interview, I sat down with a Lakey massacre survivor, and what he had to say was damning. Not only that, but he had verifiable video evidence of dead bodies that were shot by the Nigerian military. What we are about to show you is footage from his mobile phone taken after he played dead, as SARS officers beat him to a pulp. Yes, you heard it, SARS. The rogue special policing unit of Nigeria that these youth showed up to protest against under the banner hashtag NSARS allegedly showed up in Helix buses to finish the job that the Nigerian military started. Our guest, who will stay anonymous, has agreed to share the footage with us. We will play the footage plus other supporting video and documents during the interview. Anonymous was there the whole night and will share his story of survival plus a message of hope for fellow Lagosians. You may see some disturbing images and videos during this broadcast. Viewer discretion advised. So thank you so much for joining us for this interview today. Um, I just want you to walk us through what happened at the Lekki Toll Crossing. Um, but before you do, um, just give us a backstory and tell us quickly who who you are and what you do. Yes, um, I'm a graduate of National Open University. So I studied criminology and I work as a bouncer. Walk us through, I know it was a tough day uh walk us through exactly what happened um you were at the lagos protest of young people um what happened at the lecky pole crossing yeah yeah on tuesday we're at um lecky to gate for our usual peaceful protest and i was there with my colleague to make sure everything went peaceful and coordinate everyone there. And you were acting as a, under your role as a bouncer? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, please walk us through what happened that day. Yeah. So we received an info that they are me. They are having a movement called Crocodile Smile. Right. Called Crocodile Smile. So, our thought was, oh, they're coming there to see what we're doing. Because since we've been having the protests, the army has not been coming there. So we have no peace with them. So our intention was, okay, they're coming to see what we're doing. And when they come, we welcome them. If they need anything from us, we give them, we give them food and water because 
We had food and water on the protest ground. All we're doing that we are peaceful protesters. Mm-hmm. Unknowing to us that the army had a leading agenda. Because proud to the time the army got there. Um, the legal state government sent some people to come down there to disconnect the CCT, the CCTV, the camera, and the light was being disconnected. Okay, so once the toll light and the CCTV camera cut, um, how did you all see? Um, we're with our phones, we're with our phones, our torchlights, and everything. Okay. And there was a drone, a drone in the sky that was trying to video everything. It was trying to capture everything going on. And the drone, was it your drone or was it a military drone? No, it wasn't my drone. It was one of the one of the youths, one of the protesters' drone. That was how they were able to capture the military shooting at us. Okay. So what happened next? That means the military head was denying that it was Photoshop. Honestly, it is true because up to this morning before I came here, I even got analysts, people that have analyzed the various uh, videos that we are cropped, that what we call it, that we are photo, photo, photoshop put together. If not because I'm not committed, I would have forwarded it to the that, that video was photoshop. <laughs> Seriously. So anybody remember that speech, I don't feel like crying. <laughs> wow. A video was photoshop. Later in the evening, around five past five, the military were coming with full force. They started shooting from the first entrance because there were like seven bouncers, seven to six bouncers stationed at the entrance. So when they were shooting straight bullets, so everyone had to like run for their life. Some bouncers jumped into the river and the bike men there and some people selling stuff around them. They had to run for their life. Jump into the river and run away. In order to avoid the bullets. And they were shooting, they went straight. They didn't even wait to see what was going on. Their intention was to shoot, was to kill protesters. That was their intention. Because there was not even, there was no communication, there was no conversation like, oh, What's going on here? This is no conversation. They were just shooting straight, shooting, shooting. So they weren't shooting in the air to just scare everyone. This was... they were shooting straight. They were not shooting in the air. They were shooting straight, aiming to kill, aiming to kill. So when they got to the protest gun, they were still shooting. They shot a lot of bullets that we took some of the shells. They shot a lot of bullets and they killed. They killed and injured a lot of protesters. But we held our ground. Because I was, I later joined the protesters, I we held our ground with our flag singing the national anthem. to kill us, let them kill us all. No, we are not going to back down. We are not we we are not with weapon. We are unharmed and they're shooting us. at you, they opened fire. 
how many people would you say died when the military came in and opened fire? Yes, um, like four to five people died. Yes, and several were injured. The, the Nigerian governor, the Lagos governor came out that there were 27 people injured and only one death. That, that's a, a big lie. Because when the military came, we had to took the dead body to their feet. Well, after they stopped shooting straight, they were now shooting up before their commandant came in. We took the body of the dead protesters. We took it to their feet, which was the mistake we made. So you picked up these dead bodies and you dropped them at the yes, feet for them to see what they have done to so unarmed people. So unarmed protesters, peaceful protesters. Mm -hmm. The only thing we had on ourselves was our flag and our voices. That was the only thing we had. And how did these military officials respond to these dead bodies being dropped in front of them of unarmed young people? And likely were men and women were among the dead, or was it mostly men? Yes, men and women were among the dead. They wow. didn't show any remorse. Instead, they were still intimidating us, still shooting in the air as if nothing had happened. Because they were trained killers, like nothing had happened. So when their commandant came, because later their commandant came, because we sat on the floor, we heard the hand that we are moving nowhere. That if they are going to kill us, let them just kill us all. Let them just kill us all. So when their commandant came, the commandant came to address us that, oh, there's call for you, that we need to move away, that he didn't instruct them to shoot at the protesters. He only, he only instructed them to shoot in the air. So the commandant came later on um, and he said that he, yes, the commandant came he didn't order yes. them to shoot to kill. He only ordered them to shoot in the air, to shoot to scare. Yes, that was what he said. So, did anybody get reprimanded for disobeying the orders of the commandant? None, none, none. Instead, the army denied that the video was photoshopped, that no army came to the protest ground. It was so, so ridiculous with all the evidence. They thought we are dumb. They thought we didn't know what we were doing. Wow. Trying to play on our intelligence. <laughs> Seriously. Something that there were a lot of eyewitnesses there. <laughs> wow. Honestly. So later, the commandant received a call. And he asked all his men to move away from there. And they took all the cops we took to their feet and dropped them inside their van and left. They just carried the corpses, bungled them in a van and left. Yes. And they left immediately. So later, the ambulance came to take the injured to the hospital. So they took like roughly 11 to 15 injured people. The Nigerian military left with five corpses. Yes. And then the ambulances came to deal with the injured. Yes. Now, yes. did they take any of you to hospital or did they just deal with you on site? No, they took them to hospital. Okay because they had gun wounds in their system and their body. And then what happened next? So after the ambulance left, the SARS officers came with three buses. So the very SARS that you were protesting, SARS that are the special anti-robbery squad, that yes. was the reason the protest started in the first place, were the yes, were reason why we were protesting, because the 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 that unit is something else. They've turned the unit. They've they've lost their primary assignment, which is to combat armed robbers. They after guys looking good, dressing well, using iPhone. That's what they've been doing. And if you do not allow them to check your iPhone, they'll burn you down because I think they were given license to shoot. But to our knowledge, we've been told that since SARS has, uh, since the protest, SARS has been disbanded. Is that true? That's a big lie. 
That is what they've been saying since 2017. 2017, they said it. 2018, they said it. Last year, they said it. And they're saying the same to this year. What we're asking for is action to be taken. These officers work around with POS. They have POS machine. POS machine. They have a point of sale machine? Yes. To do what? To collect money. If you've been caught with iPhone or you're using an expensive gadget or using an expensive car. Right? Because they'll threaten you, they'll brutalize you that if you're not going to do they're going to shoot you. Oh my goodness. And in order for you to save your life, you have to do what they ask you to do. Some will even take you to a POS machine. POS machine to withdraw. Some will even tell you that they receive Bitcoin if you don't have cash. So many brutality. They have misused so because they were giving weapons. So start show up at the protest against stars. What did you feel at that moment, knowing that the very people that you are protesting against, your government yes. has been disbanded, showed up after the military, which really was the first wave, came in and shot young unarmed protesters, carried them away, only to deal with... I was, so, I was so terrified and disappointed in our government so terrified and disappointed in our government that they will never change. They have no regard for human life. They have no regard for the citizens. I was so, 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 so destabilized. Now what? So these people are still operating. These people are still operating after they told us that they've been disbanded and everything. Wow. And what happened when SAR showed up? And the most funniest thing, what we're fighting for is still going to benefit the police. They were shooting. They were shooting at four. Sitting in a circle. We sat there in a circle. I was in front. Approximately how many of you were left during this time? You know, the military uh, left. The military's left, the second wave has come in and started. Oh, like You're about 200 left? Yes, 200 left. And from what size did it go down to 200? Oh, before we were up to like, um, we were up to like 800 or 1,000. Yeah. When the military came. Wow, so down to 200. So SARS yeah. really came to, to get rid of the rest of you. Yes. So when they were like um, two feet away from, they were like two feet away from where we were, they shot tear gas, like four tear gas into our midst. Four tear gas into our midst. And the tear gas was so powerful. So we were trying to take cover. Before I could stand up, eight policemen gathered there. And they were hitting me with guns, hitting my head that we are going to kill you, you are going to die. You will die today. That was their statement. You will die today. You shall be protest. You will die today. So I had to fall down and pretend as if I was dead, truly. Now to avoid to be shot. So I fell down as if I was dead. When they saw that ah, he's dead, truly, they're not shooting at other protesters. Straight bullet. Shoot to kill. They were shooting them. So I was able to take the two pictures of people that died after. I was left. So, so there. I just have a couple of questions. The ambulance had left. Did the ambulance? Yes. Why did the ambulance leave? Uh, the ambulance left with um, the injured protesters. We took them to the hospital. Okay. okay. And so then SARS came in, tear gassed the place, and then killed more people. Yes. And how many how many people would you say that SARS killed? There were a lot of people, but I was able to snap and did do just two because those two were closer to me. It is only God that has everything to tell you. Look at the people that were together. Created with everything. Uh, I've already created everything for us. Okay. Those two were closer to me. 
So and before morning, they took all the dead bodies because nobody could go there to take anyone away from there. They took all the dead bodies because they were shooting to kill anything that moves. They were gunning anything that moves down. They were all through at the toll gate and the area all through till the morning. Shooting, shooting anything that moves. So I had to go to one corner to save myself from being discovered. Because if they discovered that I wasn't dead, I'm sure they're going to burn me down. So you played dead until they left? Yes, until they left. And they still came back to check if they see anybody coming back. Because all through the, the morning, I was still hearing going short. Like, going short. How, how long were you playing dead for? I played dead for like 30 minutes. Before some people came to take me away, like they thought I was there trying to move my boy. When they said I was still moving, so they carried me to a corner. It was stars carrying you, or did you know it was help at that moment? No, it wasn't stars. It was people, part of the protesters that right. hit somewhere that saw everything that happened. Right. And so you were taken finally to the hospital. Yes, in the morning. An ambulance came, like, I posted my video of how I was brutalized and everything, how I almost died on Twitter. So help was coming, people were calling in, calling ambulance, <laughs> called and helped me get an ambulance. The ambulance came in the morning. I thought I was not going to make it all through the night. I thought I was going to die. That was why I made the video that even if I did not make it, let it be known that I died a hero. I wasn't a coward. I died fighting for our freedom. So it was in the morning, the ambulance came and took me to the hospital where my head was stitched, my, my injury was being treated, and even the hospital, they were scared because they had an info that the army and the police are going to the hospital to finish up the protesters in order for there not to be any witness. So they had to let me go on time. They just gave me a few drugs. Though my treatment has not been completed, they just gave me a few drugs that I have to move on time. Because my face is everywhere. And they might be looking for me to kill me. Because they knew I had some evidence on me. And we're dealing with a very, very serious government that I don't give a damn about the life of a citizen. They don't care. And which is so bad. Because these people that they're killing, because these people in government, they have their children and they have, and these policemen, they have their children also. They have their children and everything. And they're forgetting that what they do to other people and karma is going to do it back to their family. How did you feel knowing that you were at a protest against stars. Yeah, no. I feel yeah. happy that we finally could speak up. The youth could speak up with one voice against this brutality because the brutality has been happening for a long time. It has been going on for a long time. I don't even mind because my ex-dad was a police officer. He died. He died in service. So, I was so happy that, yes, we're standing against police brutality. And it's unfair. It's unfair. Because there was a time during um, the lockdown, when there, was, when there were coffee. During the lockdown, when coffee was 10 o'clock, policemen would come out around 8, 8, 9 to raid people. When it's not even yet time for coffee, the way people 
lock them up and ask them. So this thing is not a time to fuck off. They'll tell you police is not your friend. It's your friend. Right. The pleasant has been for long, for long. So this for long. You, the COVID curfew was a good for long to exploit a lot of people by basically telling them uh, curfews at 10, but they come out at 8.30 and get money just yes. to permission to go into the curfew. Yes. Wow. I can pinpoint a station at Mushi. There was the Olos station. There was the Mushi. Olos police station. There was the Olos yes. police station that was doing that. Yes. They were known for those notorious acts. You can, if, if, if you can go to Mushi, you can ask anybody in Mushi there. Olos there are policemen are known for that such act. Such act. They are known for such act. You know, um... And they have been doing it. There are no one is going to hold them accountable for it. And they believe, oh, they have all the power because they are with weapon, they are police, and no one is doing anything. Right. Um, as you know, uh has also been like you very courageous extremely brave um she is in fear for her life as well and on the run i heard you were with her uh during the incident um, yes i was with her because our picture was posted that night that if they say that she shoots her at sight so her picture was circulating as shoot to kill. Yes, shoot to kill. So uh, we tell, we're trying to protect her that no, uh, nothing is going to happen to you. We are, we are in this together. We are in this together. Because she did live video when the military came. Live video of everything. Yeah. yeah. So she was their one, one target then. Obviously you are, um, in fear for your life and rightly so. Um, why agree to do this interview? Um, I agree because I want the whole world to know what is happening in our country. We need the intervention of an international body to come to our aid because we are tired of this oppression. Because I doubt if we are practicing democracy in Nigeria. Honestly, this is not democracy. This is not democracy at all. It's far, far from democracy. And the only people that can help us are the international aid. They are the only people that can help us, that can speak to our government. They are the only people. Because we, the citizens, try our best. Instead of them to listen to us, they keep oppressing us, keep intimidating, we keep killing us. And we are not asking too much. We are not asking for the resignation of the president. We are not asking too much. Just for them to reform the police and stop the brutality. I cannot stay in my country, be afraid of using things like, okay, I'm afraid of buying a car. I'm afraid of using good things of life because of police. Police that is supposed to be protecting us does not turn into our enemy, killing us. Because we're looking good. Because we, we wear tattoo, because we 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 having dread on our heads. It's not supposed to be so. That is why I doubt if we are the only thing they understand, if you try to argue with them, they'll say you are mad, I, I will shoot you, I will shoot you. They are used to that statement, I will shoot you, I will shoot you. Imagine. For no reason. Like what would you want people to know right now who are watching your story, have seen what's happened and are afraid and intimidated uh, to go out and to make a stand? Obviously, you're extremely courageous and I don't know where the courage came from after the first wave of killing for you all to sit on the floor with flags up as true patriot and sing the national anthem as a second wave came to gun you down. I don't know where that courage comes from. What do you say to people who are terrified and intimidated 
and for them they they would rather go to normalcy than press through do you have any encouragement for them yes this is what i'm going to say my fellow nigerians my fellow nigeria youth we are in this fight together and we are not going to give up because these have been since for 60 years now nothing has ever changed we call ourselves the giant of africa we have the resources but we are not using the resources some people are just mismanaging our resources how long do we have to stand down and watch all these people spoil our great country nigeria nigeria needs to be great we have a lot of potentials we have a lot of resources that should help our youth and these people I'm mismanaging them and we are not going to give up. We are going, we are not going to give up until they answer our demands. We are not going to give up because we are the youth of this country and we are the future of this country. The change has to start now. It has to start. We will not stop until we get the change. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me and for trusting us to tell your story and um you know on behalf of everyone at watchman news we just want to commend you for your bravery today and we're praying for you for your protection for your family nothing will come near or harm any of you and that i don't care if i'm going to die because i know they are going to come for me if i'm going to die at least how not i die as are you I know I'm going to die not as a coward, but as a hero. I will keep praying for Nigeria and we'll keep fighting until our country is great again. The death of our heroes past will not be in vain. Nigeria is going to be great again. That I know for sure. Anonymous is a hero and Nigeria should know that. Nigerian should also know he is still on the run from Nigerian officials for his life and our sources are doing all they can to keep him hidden. I'm calling on everyone who loves freedom to share this video. You might say, finally, Lagosians are experiencing what Northern Nigerians, Middle Belt Nigerians and indeed Africans have been experiencing for years. Why should we care? The answer is simple, because this is not just Anonymous' story, this is Africa's story. A website has been set up for any missing person. Please head over there now. We'll show you some of the faces of people who are still missing and yet to be reclaimed. If you are a parent who has lost their child, we would love to hear from you. Please write to us at admin at your discretion is guaranteed. For now, my name is Tommy Arimi, filling in for Nissi T, and you've been watching Watchman News. Don't forget to share, like, comment, and subscribe.